Hello, this is Renee Knight, and I'm doing a reading from a book that I read some time ago. It's called Putting on the Mind of Christ, and the author's name is Jim Marion. Um, it's a very interesting book, and I'm choosing to read something uh, very briefly from chapter 14, which is Death on the Cross of Inner Contradictions and the Descent into Hell, which is kind of a little bit like what we feel like we're living through right now with all this COVID-19 nonsense. Shortly after breaking through into the causal level, my consciousness was plunged into the dark night of the soul. Bernadette Roberts, an American contemplative housewife and mother who begins her spiritual autobiography at this point, is a helpful guide here. I compare similar experiences of Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, and Bernadette Roberts with my own, and I note how the gospel crucifixion narratives were deliberately constructed by Mark, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John to symbolize the inner spiritual events that take place during that this night. A couple months after my breakthrough into the causal level of consciousness, as I sat writing in at home, a sea of heavy darkness descended upon me. The darkness, though I did not know it then, had been uprooted from the unconscious parts of my astral body by my now total openness to the powerful new light of the causal level. The darkness had come in from the unconscious depths of my soul's other incarnations. The darkness had also come in from that part of the world's negative, collective unconsciousness. Okay, keep that in. You're in mind. Oh, did I miss something? No. Keep that in mind. World's negative consciousness. What's happening now with COVID-19? All this fear that is being generated. Please stay away. From the TV, anytime they're doing anything about COVID-19, please, please, please just get away from it. Listen to it only once a week, minimum. More than that, you are going to crazy, totally crazy with looking at the numbers and all of that. Please take care of yourself, 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 your family. First and foremost, breathe. Breathe in the morning. Deep breaths into your abdomen. Deep breaths into your rib cage. Deep breaths into your upper back so you're getting all three lobes of your lungs exercised get some exercise blah 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 okay so i'm going to go back to this reading <laughs> i'm going to start that, that that sentence again the darkness had also come in from that part of the world's negative collective unconsciousness that vibrated at the same dark heavy level as my own soul's repressed negativity none of this i knew at the time only now in Matthew's crucifixion narrative, the darkness is symbolized by the darkness which fell upon and covered Jerusalem for the three hours that Jesus hung on the cross. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. All the roots of my buried dark side, to use John of the Cross's words, were now fully exposed to the light. Their deep sufferings and pain brought into consciousness, conscious awareness. It is at this point that the contemporary American Catholic laywoman Bernadette Roberts begins her account of her spiritual path. Bernadette, imitating John of the Cross, cites in the first sentence of her book, The Path to No Self, the traditional threefold map of the Christian spiritual path, the purgative, illuminative, and unitive ways. Next, she assumes wrongly that John's efforts to fit his experience into these three parts was successful and constituted an accurate map of the whole path. The night of senses as the purgative way, the period between the nights as the illuminative way, and the unitive way following the dark night of the soul. But when she tries to fit her experience into John's version, it doesn't work. She has to admit that she's never experienced either the dark night of senses or the period between the nights, the subtle. Finally, she gives up and starts her story where, in fact, it started at the beginning of the dark night of the soul. It is amazing Bernadette felt and saw as much as she did 
as she went through this part of the spiritual path. I say this because by her own report, she had an enormous amount of emotional blockage in her third eye, Ajna Center. What is that? That is our pineal gland, okay? So if your pineal gland is blocked, and it will be blocked if you are not looking into what is of meaning for you and if you're not meditating. When you meditate, the first and foremost thing that you do is you focus on the third eye and you close your eyes and you look with your physical eyes up towards this area creating a triangle. That's the first thing you do because you have to keep enlivening your pineal gland. If you don't, your pineal gland dies. It slowly gets gets smaller and smaller and smaller over time. This is documented science. This is just a yogi's crazy idea of things. And then when we do things like brush our teeth with, with um, that stuff, I don't like it. Oh, anyhow, we brush our teeth with toothpaste that, that has the, the chemical in it that they put in the water, the same chemical. It, it actually further degrades your third eye. Okay, so if you're gonna use that toothpaste, that's toothpaste with that in it, um, it'll come to me later, that's fine. But just make sure that you're meditating every day if you're gonna do it. I, I don't use it at all, although when I go to the dentist, they always wanna put that stuff on my on my teeth. But it's okay, fluoride, yeah, I knew it would come to me as soon as I tried not to think about it. So if you're using fluoride toothpaste, make sure that you're working on your third eye, meditating every day, so breathing, every day meditating every day even if it's five minutes twice a day it's fine it will help you to keep your head together keep, keep your mind focused in one point where you want to be instead of where the powers that be want you to be cuckoo a local you know you don't want to go there you want to keep your head together okay I'm gonna go back to this shed blockage so she had a blockage in her third eye. <laughs> this is the center of psychic and spiritual vision. All through the dark night, she had great psychic pain in that center, and that area seems to have completely healed only a couple years before she entered the kingdom of heaven, the level of non-dual consciousness. At that time, her psychic powers finally opened up, but by then, seeing no use for them, she chose to shut them down. <laughs> okay, anyhow. Bernadette's account begins when she is 17 years old and apparently living in a convent. Here is her account of the descent, her descent into darkness. I have been reading in the garden when I felt an invisible film or thin veil come down over my head and shroud my mind. Instantly, I knew something had happened, but no idea came to mind, nor was there any other response swiftly and decisively. All had been done in silence, yet, however simple and innocent, its quiet descent, this act was, in effect, terrible and awful. The Almighty had simply lowered the boom. In my case, two months went by, and then I had a dream in which my guardian angel, a being with great beauty and power and blazing blue eyes, said goodbye. He also said, with a dazzling, beautiful smile, the deepest love, compassion, and gratitude, and satisfaction, I'll see you later upstairs. Okay, so this dream comforted and terrified him. It comforted him because it indicated that despite overwhelming darkness he was feeling, he was still on the right path and somehow evoked the compassion of God and the angel. But it terrified him because he thought the dream might mean he would soon die. Indeed, he felt like he was about to die, even though his common sense and inner knowingness told him that physical death was not important. The departure of the guardian angel marks the completion of the individuation process at the level of the soul. Torkum Saradarian, a devotee of one of those Western esoteric traditions, writes, the most interesting thing that happens at the fourth initiation is the departure of the guardian angel, the one who guided the steps of the initiate since the individuation as a human soul now departs, giving him a chance to delve deeper into the mystery of his own self. 
Okay, and then it starts to talk about his experience with people and all of that. So, but anyhow, that might give you a, a kind of a little bit of a an idea of what um, we might be all collectively going through right now. So, if you haven't gone through this, this is what this is. This is like a dark night of the soul kind of thing. We are being forced to take a look at our lives and say, "Whoa, what do I do now? I'm stuck at home. Do I like who I am?" Do I like what I'm doing with my time? Because if I'm just sitting at home and doing nothing, I'm going to go out of my mind and go crazy and get depressed. That's what everybody's thinking. Not just you, not just me, but everybody. And not being able to see your family is really hard. But at least we can talk to them. Thank God for the technology we have now. Imagine if this was even 20 years ago. We would have this phones and the phone technology and that's it wouldn't be able to see each other anything like that in any case I just wanted to give you a taste of, of this and I think that if, if you actually happen to have this book or can download it it would be a very good book to read right now um, this is the like chapter 14 and that's about halfway through the book many chapters are in this book Go to the very last one, just to tell you how many chapters. Oh, that's afterwards. Chapter 23. So there's 23 chapters, and this is kind of where that is in the book. About there. It's about halfway through. Um, it's a very good book to read for Christians. So I would highly recommend it. It's uh, not the easiest to read, but, um, but I think that it's very good. Um... We talk about Christ, and we talk about all that he told us to do and everything, but the reality at the end of the day, it's us that's being called to be the Christ Christed one. We have got to be that for others. We have got to be the person who uh, goes and helps out a little old lady from church, you know, who can't get out and do stuff. Um, just yesterday I went to go and see a lady who I bought a nail file for because she said I can't go to the nail salon she loves to have her nails done I can't go to the nail salon and my nails are getting really nasty looking uh, and I don't have a nail file so I went to the store and I bought her a nice little metal nail file took it over to her and some batteries because she needed batteries for something how difficult is that this is being of service in the in the Indian way of thinking about this is seva, seva to the community, seva to somebody. I'm also helping um, a young girl in my building who's having trouble dealing with all this. She's only 13. And her dad's out at work all day and her mom is at home and her brother is a person who suffers from autism and he's an adult and he is really not doing well. Um, Mom's not dealing with it well either, so guess what? The 13 year old is dealing with it. So, Maya. So, I'm trying to help her through it as best as I can with the little bit of knowledge that I have gained in this life and the teachings that I'm aware of. Anyhow, um, like as a yoga teacher and yoga master. So, anyhow, I will leave it at that and I'm going to. Uh, take off now because I'm doing a course on how to do webcasts <laughs> because I'm going to be doing more and more of this so I, I need to get better at it so <laughs> we'll talk to you later have yourself a wonderful day thanks Rani Yoga Devi signing off namaste <laughs>